Born in London, based in Los Angeles, journalist, novelist, and screenwriter Emma Forrest says she wrote her memoir early in life to save herself from descending into depression and mania one more time. She lives with the most severe form of manic depression, bipolar disorder, which does not seem to impinge on her abilities to create and write clever and rich screenplays, essays, and books. She calls her memoir, which reads like fiction, Your Voice in My Head. It is my pleasure to welcome Emma Forrest to Studio 4 to tell us more. How nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. I must confess, yeah. I didn't know uh, your voice in my head was a memoir when I started to read it. And then I discovered that and I thought, yeah. oh my gosh, <laughs> I thought this had to be fiction. That's uh, actually a compliment, I think. I, mm. I hope that means the writing's lyrical. Hopefully. Yes, it is lyrical, and I like most of the lines in the book, and I'm going to steal them one day. Oh, you're welcome. If you don't mind. Yes. Me, myself, and my totally dramatic life. So dropped Take out as... Dropped Take out... Yeah, go on. Sorry. We're going to do this the whole interview, aren't we? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, dropped out of school to write for The Guardian. Is that for the, the first Actually, yeah, the first event? one was The Times, mm. yeah. I ended up at The Guardian when I no longer wanted to have my age after my name because right. I had this horrible fear of waking up at, you know, 45 and it's saying Emma Forrest, age 45, because the first couple of years I was sort of almost like a skateboarding duck. I was just a freak. I, I, I was famous for being young and mm. it was not, not a good experience. Well, you were not just a young journalist. Yeah. You interviewed some pretty important people for a young journalist. I did. Actually, the very first interview I ever had was for my school newspaper when I was 13. I got a scoop. I interviewed Sir Ian McKellen the week he was knighted before really? any of the newspapers got to him, yes. Um, Sir Ian. Sir Ian. I interviewed Sir Ian. Yeah. Amazing man. Yeah. Well, mm. Amazing man who gave an interview to a 13-year-old girl. No yeah. kidding. Yeah. And then Nigella Lawson yeah. and Brad Pitt. Yeah. And on and on it went. Yeah. When did you know uh, your mental state was not perfect? Whew, that's interesting. I didn't know that other 12-year-olds didn't sit up at night wanting to not be alive. I didn't know because that's not the sort of thing you ask your friends, but I wondered. And it was only when I moved to New York at 21 that everything just came to the surface. I think my theory is because New York is such a crazy city that mm -hmm. I still love so much. But I feel indebted to the city for making everything visible because before it was me just managing to keep mm. it beneath the skin. So your... Uh uh, manic side came out like a big rash. Yeah, I Ooh. mean that's the thing about women is that we write our anxieties and our pain on our own bodies. I mean mm. it's men who do road rage who, or who get in bar fights and women don't really do that. I mean I remember reading that even Princess Diana was a kata and mm -hmm. a bulimic and we express, or we use our bodies as a canvas so I have been doing that for years and years and years secretly. Mm -hmm. yeah. What were you doing to your body? I was cutting, um, I was, I thought I had in, invented bulimia, I didn't know anyone had ever done it before, I swear it was absolutely the most brilliant thing I'd ever done, mm. was found a way to eat everything I wanted and throw up all day. And then I realized I was living in the best city in the world, apologies to Vancouver in New York, and spending my days inside being sick and not leaving the house because I didn't have time to mm. anymore. Did you have normal moments um, I must have because when I talked to my family, to my mum, the reason she said we just didn't, we just didn't know mm -hmm. because you were still the same cheerful, happy, funny girl. So I must have had good moments. And if anybody's normal, your parents are fairly normal. They're normal to me. <laughs> A tiny bit eccentric here or there, but right. fairly normal. Your yeah. mom's an American, your father's British. British. Yeah. Now you're in Los Angeles. Yeah. You have the good job. Yes. Yes. Uh, when did you know you had to seek help? You had to find your Dr. R. Well, I didn't know. I ended up, um, after being with various different psychiatrists, I ended up on the doorstep of this man who was different from the others. And I think with psychiatry, which I highly recommend to everyone, whether you think you have a problem or not, um, it's like boyfriends. It's not going to be right the first time, necessarily. Mm. There is a chemistry to it. and. The chemistry with us just worked. I thought it was just us, but of course, when 
he died, I then found out that everyone who crossed mm -hmm. paths with him said that he saved their life. Mm -hmm. And you write that so beautifully in here because it, 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 there's your story and there, there's the story of others, the others. who met with uh, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Rosecan, mm. real name, Yes, Dr. R in the book. Yeah. How did he help you now that you can reflect? <sighs> Uh, again, this is something I've talked about with my parents, and I, I had a very good family. This is part of why you know people say, "But there was nothing wrong," mm -hmm. as if that's how mental illness works. Yes. Um, but as much as they loved me, as much as they wanted me to be okay, they couldn't, in their heart of hearts, always say that I was going to be okay. Whereas Dr. Roskin had absolute faith that I was going to be fine. And mm -hmm. that actually, ultimately, on reflection, is what got me through and what got the other patients mm. through. How interesting. So being depressed about one thing a day, not everything, you, what, is now? a good, yeah. yes, it, oh, is great. Yeah, and of course, when you're in a real proper depression, you have the sense that this will never, ever pass. And that's mm -hmm. what's so terrifying about it. And of mm -hmm. course, now I'm in a place in my life where I have an understanding that as bad as things may sometimes feel, they will eventually pass. Yes. But when you lose that sense of reasoning. It's a crushing weight. It's a dark hole. Yeah. It's many things. Yeah. And if you, one has never experienced it, it's very difficult for us to grapple what it would feel like yeah. to want to die every day, it's hard twice to, a day. It's hard to write about as well. I mean, one of the first things I wrote about when I started as a journalist was music. And music, of course, mm. is very hard to describe. How do you describe musical mm. notes? And actually writing about madness it, it reminded me of, of when I used to describe music. And if I have had any success here in actually communicating what it feels like to be losing it, I'm very mm. pleased because it's, it's, it's tough. Yes, and I think a memoir is like a song in that uh, whoever's reading it interprets it how they do. Mm. You hear a song, you, you think different things mm. than I do. You mm. read this memoir, depending on mm. who you are, where you come from, yeah. what you value, uh, what kind of love affairs you've had. That is something that makes me so happy. That's what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be song lyrics you interpret the way that mm -hmm. you interpret it. Uh, the voice in your head says what to you today? Today, it says that life is good and vast and worth living and that mm -hmm. it's not easy and it's not going to get any easier either, but that I have uh, the tools to, if not walk easy, I have the mm -hmm. tools to walk tall. Okay. When you hooked up with uh, the man you called Gypsy Husband, a right. uh, GH in, in the, the book, book. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as you know and you point out many times, we hook up with people to learn more about ourselves. <laughs> yes. Tell me about that love affair. Um, that was, it, you know, it, it's funny actually, I think that when you're with, and I'm trying to think how to phrase this so I'm not using curse words, but um, when you're with um, an actor, actors who are very, very good at it um, and who gain a large measure of success in it have a, a similar mindset to manic depressives, which is how can it be that if I'm an absolute piece of, mm -hmm. I am also the center of the universe. Mm. And uh, that actually is something that I related to very strongly. That's pretty much you know, the teenage me. Yes. was I'm the worst person in the world and the best person in the world. Mm -hmm. And everybody thinks I'm the best person in the world, but yeah. I don't feel like yeah. the best person in yeah. the world. Yeah, or the days when why don't people understand how fabulous I am. Mm -hmm. That too. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, definitely a connection there and an understanding. And we all meet people in life who um, you may have greater loves, you may have greater nurturers, you may have greater comforters, but I think... We all meet one person who really understands us. And that doesn't mean you can stay together. No. It doesn't even mean to stay together for a long time. Mm -hmm. But to be seen and understood is an amazing feeling. An amazing thing, and it's magical. And a seal has a new song right now called You Get Me. Right. So it's not about how beautiful I think you are or how much you tell me you love yeah. me. It's you I get understand. me. You get my good, my bad, my yeah. ugly. And I think that's why those are such difficult mm. ones to move on from, because you think, well, they've seen me, and now they don't see me. Sure. Is anyone else ever going to understand me the same way? 
And Gypsy Husband at the time is someone we probably know. I don't know if uh, you want to confess to it, but Colin Farrell was your Gypsy lover, correct? Well, no. Colin, Colin was someone I was with for a, a good while, actually, and um, is someone who I did have to pre-warn before the book came out and before it actually even went to press. I had to say, listen, because as an actor in this book, everyone's going to say that it's you, and mm -hmm. I need you to not be blindsided by that and, you know, do you, do you want to see it and see if there's anything that, that needs to be changed or, or fixed to make you more comfortable? The, the thing is, having been with someone who's as famous as him, destiny is that anyone I write about from now mm, on, people true. will say, that's him. I mean, I could write about a 10-year-old African-American girl, and they'll say, well, that's obviously Colin Farrell. Obviously, you know, there's just yes. no way around it. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Yeah. Uh, and uh, did he want to read it? Did he read it? Um, he went back and forth about mm. it. I don't know if he has read it, but he um, was just such a huge supporter of my writing, um, probably the biggest fan I ever had of, of my work. Uh, I hope he does read it. Yes, I do too. Uh, and he still probably looms a bit large in your head, or does he? Have um, you finished? No, I mean, I, I think I have a large and interesting life. I know that he has a large and interesting life with many wonderful things mm. in it. I have um, an amazing boyfriend who I've been with for over a year. In fact, this is an interesting thing about the universe is the week that I handed in the manuscript for this book that just lays open my life and my romantic history I met the person I am with, and after three months I had to say, I have a book coming out. <laughs> you should probably read the manuscript. Um, yes, so that you're going to know more about me than you probably should. That was should. not fun, yes. I'm sure not, because yeah. it did, we'll, come, we'll take a break yeah. and come back okay. and talk about the cutting, because uh, uh, why do you do it? Uh, how does it seem to solve a problem? Mm. What is it about? And then mm. I want to talk about okay. Dr. R, because okay. he sounds like an incredible, incredible man. All right. Okay. Emma Forrest, our guest, Your Voice in My Head, her memoir.